What's going on mobile gamers? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the PS Vita emulator for your Android device. Let's jump in and check out the PS Vita emulator. Warning! The PS Vita emulator is still in its early stages of development. Some games work great until they don't. You'll find out what I mean during this video. I hope the team keeps working on this and continues to do so, otherwise at this point I suggest spending the money on a PS Vita if you need your Vita fix. You've been warned. Alright guys, so the very first thing we are going to do to get the PS Vita emulator, yes it does work. I've warned you. It does work, but there are some flaws with it because it is still in early development stages. I played Mortal Kombat for about 20 minutes and then it crashed on me, but hey, this is cool. For anybody that has maybe a stronger device than I do, I'm using the S20 FE. I have an S22 Ultra that I have yet to try it on, but it'll probably work on that a lot better. But I've heard things that it doesn't work great on a lot of devices yet. So this is a setup guide to get you going and teach you how to get your games loading and everything. And I will show you where to get your games. But for the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in PS Emulator. And then you're going to look for Vita 3K. That's the emulator that we're going to be downloading today. You're going to go to Vita 3K. You're going to go to the little three lines at the top right hand side, which is the hamburger icon. You're going to click on download. You're going to go all the way down to grab from GitHub for Android, which is our Android device that we're going to be using today. And then you're going to scroll all the way down, all the way down until you see assets. If this assets doesn't drop down, click on it. And this is the latest version as of last month. So you're going to click on that. You're going to download it and then you're going to open it and install it. Now, once it's installed, I highly recommend going to your files, creating a folder called PS Vita, just because we're going to be creating a folder for PS Vita. Uh, we want to keep all of our PS Vita stuff in here. We're going to click create. Now I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I'm going to grab my PS Vita emulator. You don't have to do this part, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy it into my PS Vita folder just so that it's there. And then we're going to go look for our Vita 3K app. Click on it. And then we're going to follow the prompts. So I'm going to click on English United States, even though I'm in Canada, I'm going to click on English United States. Click next. Now you're going to have to install these two firmwares. Don't worry, this is going to be easy. All you have to do is click on download firmware. And then a little web page is going to open up in Chrome. Now you're going to scroll all the way down. You're going to long press on download update. And then you're going to go to download link. And it's going to say file can't be downloaded securely. That's okay. We're going to click keep anyways. And then it's going to download that 127 megabyte file. So you're just going to wait for that to do its thing. Now you're going to go back while it's doing that. And then you're going to download what is called a font package. So click download font package. And then it's going to download that file as well, which is a P PSP2 update.pup file. Now you're going to click back. Now those two files are downloaded. Keep clicking back until you exit Google Chrome. Now you're going to install these firmwares. You're going to go down to your downloads files. You're going to install this one. Installation in progress, which is the actual firmware for your PS Vita. All right, now the firmware has been successfully installed. Now we're going to have to install the firmware for the, the actual font package, which is the second firmware. So click the three lines, sort by modified first, and then click this one, which is a 56 megabyte firmware. Now that that's done, we're going to click next. And then I like to set this up for grid mode. So I'm going to check this grid mode. I'm not going to touch anything else. This is just basically just the setup for the device itself. Click next. Now you have completed this initial setup for your Vita 3K system. Now the next thing you're going to do is just scroll down to the bottom. Don't show this next time. Click the checkbox so it doesn't show again. Click close. Now we're going to create a user. I'm just going to create a user as user one. Click confirm. Click OK. Now I'm going to check the checkbox for automatic user login, which technically I probably only have one user on this device anyways. And then I'm going to click on that user. And this is the home menu for your PS Vita. Now, this is what your home menu is going to look like. There's not a lot here that you're going to need to touch really uh, in regards to like configuration. Now, if you want to take off the overlay, which we're going to do, which is the, the on-screen controls, which I'm going to show you my controller. Uh, I'm going to click on controls, go to overlay, click the checkbox. Now that that overlay is gone, 
we can use our Bluetooth controller or our USB-C type controller. Now I can feel the device getting quite hot while I'm using this thing already because it is running uh, a heavy emulator that's not meant for this, but that's okay. You're going to have to download an application from the Google Play Store called 7-Zip, well not called 7-Zip, it's called uh, Zip Extractor. So I downloaded the Zip Extractor. I've already got this game on here. Click open. And then you're gonna select the file that you wanna unlock. There are some ads on this version of it. The regular formatting uh, of your uh, 7-zip file does not extract properly using the file formatter on your actual device or the file storage on your device. So you're gonna select the storage. You're gonna go down to your downloads, wherever your file is. All right, so there's the file right there, Mortal Kombat. This is in the form of a 7z file. I'm gonna click on it and then I'm going to extract it. Now wait for that ad. Now you're gonna have to enter a file name. So I'm gonna name it Mortal Kombat, and then I'm gonna click Extract, and then you're gonna select a folder that you can extract it to. So I'm gonna actually select my PS Vita folder. It okay, selected that folder. Now click Extract, and wait for it to do its thing. It's gonna take some time. All right, now that that file has been transferred over, we're gonna go into our PS Vita folder. We're gonna look at our folder that says Mortal Kombat, we're going to go into the app folder. Now, this is very important. You're going to copy this or move this file to the root of our PS Vita folder. So we're going to move it right here. Now that that's moved, you're going to highlight it so that it's checked off. You're going to click on the three dots or whatever device you're using to actually use your file manager for. And then you're going to click compress. Now you're going to compress it as a zip file. Again, this is very important for the game to actually work and be installed on the PS Vita emulator. All right, now that that's a zip file, you can technically delete this file if you wanna save up some space on your device. So we're gonna move it to the trash. I'm going to go to my three dots, go to my trash, and then I'm going to empty my trash, empty trash, there we go. Now we're gonna go back to our PS Vita emulator. You're gonna to go to file, you're gonna to go to install zip select file go down to your ps vita folder now you're going to look for that pse 0023.zip file which is our mortal kombat game click on it and now it's going to install now that your device has installed the game you're going to click ok and then you're going to see the game pop up right on the bottom of your screen let's attach our bluetooth controller and jump over to the camera side all right, so I got my Bluetooth controller connected here. We're gonna click on the game, click start. And as you see, all the buttons are working by default. I didn't have to do any configuration for this device at all. I know like the buttons are different compared to what the PS Vita would be, but everything works. You can just play it the way it is until it crashes. And like I said, it does crash every once in a while on this device at least. Maybe if you have an S23 Ultra, for example, or an AYN Odin 2 that is coming out soon that might work great as well otherwise this is the ps vita setup guide i hope you guys enjoy playing some ps vita on your android device otherwise like i said at the beginning maybe just buy a ps vita for now on support the developers hopefully they keep working on this thing because it is pretty awesome to see that they actually ported over ps vita on android and other platforms take care have a nice day enjoy gaming see you next time Bye-bye.